over here. This is warmer water. The reds are warm. Um, but here now is the main body of the stream. And remember, you're looking at temperature here. The core of the current is about 20 to 30 miles in from that north edge. So if I'm looking at the edge here, along in here, the main body of the current probably located somewhere in here. Clear, despite the shake? Okay, so this is a major move and uh, has some profound navigational implications. Some of the models were having some hard time with this. Some of them flattened out the meander. Some of them moved the meander over to the east sooner than others. So there are all sorts of questions over the last few weeks about optimum routes. Um, it may be getting settled a little bit better, but the reason for the questions has to do with this major movement over a fairly short period of time. Okay, so let's take a look now. Johns Hopkins is off the air. For those of you that use Hopkins for the, for the um, composites, um, they're, they're no longer available, but the Ocean Prediction Center is providing us with four-day composites based on observations from the GOES satellite. Um, if we look at that, next one please. Um, this is a four-day composite on the 8th, up here, on the 8th of June, okay? And here you are looking, you know, sort of like what you saw on the 6th, not too bad. Next one please. And here you are on the 11th, you're starting to see it moving off more to the east. So the composites are agreeing with this, the daily snapshot composite. And the next slide, please. So here we are on the 16th. You really see a jump. Okay? There you are. Okay? This is now four days of a composite. And remember, there's a little bit of art in the composite. It's not as good as an instantaneous image. They're doing averaging over a period of time, the satellite image. Okay. Next slide, please. Now let's take a look at what I like for, for, for model data. This is an altimetry-based model of ocean current, okay? And the reason that I like this guy, uh, this is all weather. You don't have to worry about clouds in this. It is a model. It's a couple of days old. So you see here, we're looking at something like the 12th up here. So this is really indicative of conditions on the 10th. It takes a couple of days for them to download the data, process the data, and to produce the image. Okay, so recognize that. There's a couple of days of error in this whole thing. But here you are on the 12th. Now, let's just play with the meander. Here it comes, down here. But mind you, this is currents now. We've thrown a little curveball at you. We're talking about water temperatures before, for the most part. And these are currents. So there's going to be a difference in location relative to the, uh, the edge of the north wall. So here's your meander, if you bear with me, because I'm going to shake it on here. That's sort of the north wall now. But the currents are, there's plenty of east going current and south going, southeast going current uh, for quite a ways. This is on the order of 30 miles or so. This is a five degree block here, okay? So one degree is about in here, that's 60 miles. So you can figure the distance out there is about 30 miles. Um, 12, next please. 14, next please. And if you go, if you could look at this with a click, 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 and a click, 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 you see that thing is migrating fairly regularly for the first time in quite a while to the east. We haven't seen that in quite a while. The old rule that I had in one of my write-ups that based on years of data would tell you that it's supposed to be a regular easterly progression in the meander. Well, that's gone out the door, and part of the result of that is more common pinch-off and eddy formation and some of them are cold down to the south of the stream, and some of those are warm to the north of the stream up onto the shelf and are responsible for the major warming that's going on in the Gulf of Maine. Okay? Now, this is a very interesting uh, uh, plot to the south of the main body. This is main body up in here. But there are two counter-rotating features here, cold core rings. Okay? And, and these guys, you can see, are um, 100 miles across, 100 miles across or so, and might, if they're really formed up, this is an honest-to-God cold core ring here, 
produce three knots of, of current. Maximum currents in these guys is about three knots. And the general drift is to the west. So this guy is drifting down towards Hatteras. Okay, this guy is drifting down towards Hatteras. This guy here um, shows uh, as a cold ring, but if I, can I go back one? Please, and another one? Okay, not there on the, on the 12th. It looks to be an artifact that's produced by this circular flow out of the, out of the meander. So it may not have currents as strong as three knots. It's getting organized as an eddy, sort of like you see in a stream flow, okay? But it may not be as strong as you expect to find in this one or in this one. But it is there. Okay, one more, forward, another one. Thank you. Um, so here we come. Um, two very interesting features. This is affecting some portion of the rum line here with a little bit of adverse current. Not all that much. We get over in here, we get a nice little boost going down. And then we get down closer to Bermuda and we got this guy. Um, we can argue about whether it really exists on these data and this model. It does exist as a warm feature that is clockwise rotating. So you got favorable currents pushing it to Bermuda along the run line short of Bermuda. Okay? Um, I gave you the, a copy of this guy. I gave some number of you a copy of this guy. Uh, for two reasons. One, I like to work with paper. It's there. And the other one is, I think a lot of us have had a real problem getting our, our, our copies of this thing or getting on the website and getting it. We won't go into why the government is behind the, the curve on getting this security tab set up and the rest, but that some of us have had difficulty getting this. And that's why I gave you a co hard copy of it. Models. Next slide. Um, this is a Tide Tech model. And if you compare this to any of the above, particularly to the, to the Rutgers site, you can see that it's underplaying the meander. So I might wonder about the value of, of some of this. And that's what I would advise anybody doing. You take a look at the model result and you try to compare it to the extent possible to the actual observations, to the actual observations. We've had a benefit this year, I've had a benefit this year, two boats coming up, one from Bermuda and one from Antigua, that give me great confidence in the altimetry data, the altimetry-based model. And I'm sure all of you can play that game a little bit. Don't place blind faith in numerical models. We build them. Don't place blind faith in numerical models or the guy that's building them. Okay, next slide. A little bit better. Uh, this is a Navy model. And um, does a pretty nice job. Does a pretty nice job of handling the uh, the meander and the and the bottom of it, and some of the sense in the flow. I didn't. I haven't run this on the computer to take what it looks like in, in, in all the detail, but hell of a lot better representation of what that uh, meander is looking like. Okay. So the Gulf Stream is out there. It's showing quite a meander with a with a couple of cold ring features east and west of the run line and a nice clockwise rotating warm core feature down towards Bermuda. Uh, it, it's influencing how I'm routing my way down to Bermuda. Thanks very much. So now when all else is said, we can read the media news about what the weather is going to be. Joe Sinkowitz from the Ocean Prediction Center. Thank you, and I, I hope this works. Um, next uh, slide, next uh, presentation. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for being able to uh, take part in this uh, uh, while I wait for my slides. Could be acapella. All right, well, let me do this freelance. You don't want to see. Okay, we've already had two boats that we've assisted Coast Guard on this year uh, that were rolled uh, and uh, uh, dismasted. One was in Alex, and one was in a nor'easter back uh, uh, within the last couple of, uh, within about a month ago. 
uh, not small boats. And uh, so you are obviously going to see. Um, do you have the slides? All right, so we're going to do this differently. I've never done this. Um, OK, so you have a feature that's going to be occurring. You're going to have a blocked 500 millibar pattern going across the Atlantic. It's not blocked yet, but it's going to be blocked. Blocked means the west to east progression is not going to be as normal. Um, I actually had two slides that showed the anomalies uh, as they progress over time. And the, low, the, the upper low, mid-level low, 500 millibar low, that is going to be developing over eastern Canada down uh, uh, along as a trough along the east coast is going to be yours to deal with after the front passage passes sometime after the starts tomorrow night. And there may be some thunderstorms. Here we go. All right. Forgot what I had. Okay. You are going to be beyond 25 miles in my office's responsibility for the ride down to Bermuda. Okay. Uh, I work for the NOAA Ocean Prediction Center. I'm a marine meteorologist slash oceanographer, and I'm in year 33 of uh, my career, and this is what I've been doing. Okay, so you're going to be starting south of New England waters, and that's, uh, 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 this is point of work. yes, right here, coming across uh, through 2 ANZ 915, ANZ 910, and then beyond 250 miles, you're going to be what's known as the, in the high seas waters different type of forecast. The list is here. You're going to be starting at NT1. That's the offshore forecast. Today, tonight, tomorrow is the format all the way through out to five days. Uh, winds, wind direction, waves, wave heights, significant wave height. Uh, off NT2 is the same. Uh, and then you will be in the high seas, which is a descriptor associated with the weather systems. So you, that follows weather systems as opposed to actually today, tonight, tomorrow. Okay, I'm saying this for a reason. Numerical models, as Frank just said, they are wonderful. They are incredible. But they're not right. They're not perfectly right, especially as you go out in time. Okay, five days, seven days, we have amazing skill. We see things now out to 10 days. We don't know that at day 10 that that's going to happen. Okay, but we do see things, but, but the predictability, it wanes with time as you get away from zero hour. And we depend on observations, and the observations have error in them also. Uh, there's still a high frequency voice. There's a medium frequency nav text that covers this area. And also, there's FTP mail. Those you can consider as backups for the wonderful information that I have in front of you. Um, to 25 knots in here, but the bulk of it is basically 15 to 20 knots uh, in the northwesterly. Okay, and there's the front all the way down uh, there. Next slide. Okay, things keep pushing uh, southeastward. Uh, this is 8 p.m. on Saturday. Again, the frontal boundary here is, is pushing eastward. There's even an area in there of 25 to uh, uh, 25 knots of wind uh, uh, to almost 30 knots of wind. But the bulk of it is about 20 knots out of the northwest. Um, uh, to the west of the rum line, on the rum line, it's, it's 20 knots. Next slide. Okay, and this continues over time, but you see just a, sort of a general weakening trend. The other thing to note is, um, oh, go, go ahead, the next one. And this is Monday uh, uh, morning at, uh, uh, 12, at 12 Z or 8 a.m. Um, and you can see still a northwesterly flow. This is a high that is built off. I showed that in the 96 hour. Uh, built off the coast, and there's a bit of a weakness in here uh, of, of lighter winds uh, with a ridge axis pushing out. Next slide. Okay, and again, here's the high that's come off the coast, and I, I was a little surprised when I saw this. This is basically in the 5 to 10 knot range all the way here. This is a ridge axis in here that's developed. That's that weakening of the pressure gradient that I showed you in 96 hours. And the next slide. And this is zero, uh, uh, zero Z on the 22nd. Um, and the high has really built out to the west of Bermuda. There's a ridge axis in here. And now we have a southwesterly flow that's building well to the west of the rum line uh, in there, as there's a low pressure uh, system uh, forming uh, over the southeast US. And I, one more slide, I think. OK, I wanted to, we, we don't just look at single models. Okay, and that means we, that's probably you shouldn't either. 
this is actually an ensemble of models. It's 30 members from the Global Forecast Ensemble System and 20 members from the Canadian Ensemble from Zero Z last night. And what, did I want, what I wanted to show you, this is from uh, the 22nd at Zero Z. I was mentioning a ridge axis. This is the, the probability of winds 15 knots or greater. And this is on our website. Uh, and you can actually choose a variety of these. That's that high right in there. And there is Bermuda. Okay, and this is the southwesterly flow. So there's, there's 50 models contributed to this, and basically is a high enough probability of that, but there's a high enough probability of conditions to be significantly less than 15 knots uh, along that ridge axis. Next slide. Frank already showed this one. I actually want to show the next one. Yep, okay. One thing we have on our website associated with that, this is the age of the observations that go into the composite. So you can see blue is good, that's recent, and brown in here, that's four days old. Okay, so it gives you an idea of, of as far as the SST uh, from the uh, geostationary satellites, it gives you an idea of the age of the, of the data. Okay, thank you very, very much, have a safe race. I think we now have to clear the hall, unfortunately because we had hoped to have a Q&A, but um, maybe next time around. Have a good evening, folks. Have a good race. <laughs>